Hey, good afternoon to you. Mark Suttoth, Hurricane Track here Tuesday now, the first day of October 2024. And the headline is, a busy October. Probably going to be so because of the very warm Atlantic Basin that we still have in place. In fact, as I go through the update, I'm going to show you those anomalies again for the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean, but especially the Gulf, in the wake of a powerful hurricane. And we really did not chisel away at those departures from the average very much. It's pretty astounding, to be honest with you. We'll look at that as we move forward. Now, I will temper this with a bit of good news. I do not see anything over the next five days to maybe a week's time frame that suggests we're going to get anything particularly intense. So if we're talking about intensity, like we just had with Helene, no, I don't see it. But we could be looking at impacts. And at the end of the day, that is, of course, what it is all about. We could have some very heavy rain for Florida. Yes, there could be some impacts. And this does matter because parts of Florida, of course, in and around the Tampa Bay region and up through the Big Bend are picking up the pieces from the aforementioned terrible impacts from Helene. So let's get started. First with a post from Dr. Phil Klotzbach. You know, not coincidence, I guess, that the forecast for the next two weeks, remember we get these bi-weekly updates during the peak of the season, and they are helpful because we can look at the state of the atmosphere, how everything's moving along with intraseasonal features like the MJO or convectively coupled Kelvin waves, and just how everything is lining up. And right now, it's lining up so that, you know, he's talking about a 99% chance of above normal activity over the next two weeks. And that makes sense because we do have Kirk out here. We do have a very favorable shear environment overall. The generally favorable MJO, the Madden Julian oscillation, but that's going to be kind of moving out of phase. Plus the ensembles, the models that show more than just the operational, are quite active as well over the next 10 days or so. So it just makes sense that it's busy now. It will stay busy for the foreseeable future. And we can see that reflected on the National Hurricane Center homepage. Now, this is good to see. We no longer have our area down here on the two-day tropical weather outlook. It is not there. You have to look at the seven-day, and then it pops back up again, meaning that the chances overall are generally low. Still medium, you know, 40%. That's not nothing. But we're not seeing a rapid increase in organization. This is not the same type of setup that we had that gave us Helene. The atmosphere has changed a little bit, and there's going to be more shear. The energy is not going to be able to bundle as much. But there still could be impacts, and we will address that as we move deeper in the update. Meanwhile, we have Kirk out here, almost a hurricane. This will add what we call the ACE score points, accumulated cyclone energy. And then we do have our new disturbance out here, well, new-ish, 91L, and that will continue to strengthen and become our next storm, and that will be Leslie. And this one right here, this newer one, 91L, more than likely does turn somewhere out in this corridor. That would be my guess. But it's not a complete lock just yet. Some of the ensemble members, especially from the Euro, we got to watch it. It is at a lower latitude, just a little bit north of 10 degrees north latitude. Kirk, however, is out of here. It's gone. It'll curve out into the Atlantic, and that will be that. It's going to be a major hurricane, it does appear. And again, we're going to really pound the uh, the A score upwards over the coming days. And uh, hey, also good news. Whatever was plaguing many of these websites for satellite data has been unplagued and... Uh, is that a word? I guess it is now. And we got our satellite stuff back from the usual awesome tropical tidbits over at Weather Nerds and other sites. And I like it. I mean, there's good stuff from the NOAA sites, certainly. But the user interface here is just much easier to, to navigate, in my opinion. So here we go. There's Kirk out here. Here's 91L. And there it is at that lower latitude. we got to watch this. Kirk lifts out. Could be some ridging that tries to build in and send this a little bit more west. And then we just have to watch you know, the traffic and everything else downstream from there to see where would-be Leslie will end up. Days away from any problems, if it's ever going to be a problem, just watch it, track it for now, and that'll be that. Meanwhile, there's our upper-level low moving through the Western Caribbean. Limited shower and thunderstorm activity with it overall. But in the Eastern Pacific, we do have a system that's trying to develop down here. And I want to go back over to the National Hurricane Center homepage 
because we haven't talked about the East Pack very much, and I want to admit something, I completely dropped the ball on John that impacted Acapulco again and different areas of southeast and southern Mexico, and um, I blew it. Just didn't acknowledge them at all just because I was so focused on Helene. Not going to make that mistake again. We do have people that watch our videos in Mexico, and uh, that's a real bummer. I, I'm sorry that I did that. However, I am not the only voice out there, obviously. Uh, but nevertheless, we're going to make sure we stay on top of the East PAC activity. That being said, it's interesting to see two areas so close together. So which one is which? What's the deal? Well, we got Eastern Pacific Invest Area 97. Remember, they do the same thing over there, 90 through 99, except they use EP for Eastern Pacific. And then we have this next feature over here, which is EP 96. So you got two different areas down here trying to compete with each other in the Gulf of Tawanapak. If we go back to the satellite animation over here, you kind of tell, yeah, we do have two different areas. One's right there, the other one's here. What happens with all of this will be interesting to track over the coming days, and I can show you that on the model guidance as well, because it's possible that some of this energy here could cross over. This is called the Isthmus. It's an area that connects land masses. Cross over from the Gulf of Tawanapak into the Bay of Campeche, and then maybe try to generate something in the Gulf of Mexico. We're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit, but some of the model guidance is suggesting that. And we'll have to watch and see, because the stronger something is here, this land mass is very narrow. We could get something in the Gulf that could then get pulled up towards Florida later on. So we're going to have a pretty complicated and rather intricate pattern to track over the coming days. And then another piece of this energy could head off in this direction, eventually posing some issues for our friends along the Baja. And maybe, just maybe, the desert southwest of the United States. Still too far out to really worry about that too much, but rather interesting stuff happening down in the eastern Pacific and how that could affect the Gulf of Mexico and elsewhere. And we can see all of this on this afternoon's GFS. It's actually based on the 12Z run right here, initialized at 8 a.m. Eastern Time, 12 Zulu Time, to be accurate, I guess, meteorologically. And so what do we got? Well, let's use the color blue, first of all, to make everything pop. There's Kirk. This is 91L. All kinds of other little pieces of energy sitting out here in the Atlantic that are non-tropical. We've got a decent little mid-level ridge sitting down here, ridging over. I bet it's pretty hot out here, isn't it? Yeah, in the Midwest and out towards the western U.S. and the desert southwest. Toasty out there. And lo and behold, there's our energy down in the southeastern Pacific in the vicinity of the Gulf of Tawanapak. So I want to do two things. First, let's look at what happens with Kirk and would-be Leslie over here. Those systems go on out. Pretty strong hurricanes, again, boosting the ace count. And uh, then we got to watch and see with this next one. Again, more than likely, the ridge has been jackhammered through here, and this is not going to be able to continue on west. I don't see that happening. So this will probably follow Kirk out. But we don't know that for sure. And especially when you get these one-two punches, that's a week out. We'll just do a week right here. Uh, so an interesting time ahead. Again, big ace producers, hopefully uh, meteorologically appealing hurricanes to look at that aren't bothering anybody. Shipping interests would steer away from them. And so you can just appreciate nature's fury at a, at a great distance. You know, I think we can all understand that. Meanwhile, though, let's watch what happens over here. And for that, we will switch the extent over to the western basin and there's that ridge sitting out over the western atlantic southwestern atlantic region the ridge is kind of thicker right in here it's air all piled up literally and these are kind of like your contour lines on a topo map except this is the atmosphere and then there's our sort of gyre sitting down here you can see the wind flow kind of going like this and it comes back around like such but not nearly as pronounced as the central american gyre event that gave us historic Helene. Nevertheless, let's watch this area over the next week or so and see what happens with all that energy out there, those vorticity signatures. Uh, let's scooch this back down so I can get it to work. And, um, you know, there's some attempt at focusing that energy, but most of it is over land or it's competing with what's happening in the eastern Pacific. But watch what happens. One of those features, 97L, does get going here south of 
Mexico, and again, more bad weather perhaps for Acapulco and regions there. They got flooded from John. John came in, came back out, became John again. Just a real big mess down there. And again, really sorry that I missed that. I saw it. I just failed to mention it. That's on me. We've already talked about that. But then this energy just kind of gets stretched out. Nothing's bundling up and focusing. And that's great. We don't need to see anything else you know, anytime soon. But you know, there are attempts there in the, uh, the modeling to get something going. So we have to watch and see. Some, you know, one model run, you get something. The next model run, you don't. Kind of a large, sprawling area of energy out here. Rain and squalliness, you know, that's, that's what it would be. Uh, not bundled like we saw with Helene, hopefully. And then that all just kind of gets stretched out. And if we look at a week's time at the upper levels, that is good to see. All that energy coming across the top shears these things apart like cotton candy. Unlike the big sprawling ridge of high pressure that we had in the upper levels that gave us Helene. After all, this is October 8th. Stuff eventually has to change and not be as favorable which is just fine and dandy. However, let's do look at the precipitation and the relative humidity side of things. This does still suggest a lot of rainfall potential. All that green you see, it could be a wet period coming up for Florida and of course the biggest cleanup efforts and so forth roughly from here north around to the Big Bend area and even some of that moisture streaming into the southeast but hopefully not anything more west towards the hardest hit areas of western North Carolina, eastern Tennessee, and vicinity. But this doesn't mean there's no impacts at all. It just means we don't have anything bundled to give us wind and surge and that kind of stuff. But nevertheless, could get some heavy rain coming from this down the road. All right, as I told you, sea surface temperature anomalies, this is quite, um, I don't even know. It's not, it's hard to explain why this just continues. And the endless supply of this very warm water, when you drag a hurricane through the ocean like we did here with Helene, you should create quite the cold wake. We saw a pretty pronounced one after Francine, but this is yesterday. That's September 30th. It's always a day behind, and we're just not seeing much of a dent at all. And, uh, I mean, there's a little bit here. We're really close to average right there. But, you know, these water temperatures up here off the coast of uh, Tampa and near the Big Bend, that's still almost two degrees warmer than average. Everything out here in the western Atlantic has nothing to do with Helene, but still running way above the long-term average. And if we look at the actual sea surface temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico, which is right here, um, again, it really didn't do much to bring them down. That's 29 Celsius. That's 28 Celsius, which is uh, 82 Fahrenheit. In fact, let me just give you a different perspective on this. This is where you can really understand just how warm the Gulf is and why until we can get these big sweeping fronts to come down we still have to monitor things really closely especially for Florida. October is Florida's biggest month for major hurricane landfalls in history. Over time you get more major hurricane landfalls in Florida in October. If you didn't know that you can look it up. And here's a big reason why the Gulf stays really warm and look at the scale over here. 27 degrees Celsius, remember science is in metric, that is 81 Fahrenheit. So at the left end of the scale, the coldest temperatures that you can find relatively, right? We're just looking at the, the scale here. Um, 27, 27C or 81 Fahrenheit. So that's this area right up here, purple. A little bit of purple in here, but mostly in the Mississippi Sound, Mobile Bay, Lake Pontchartrain and vicinity. That's still 81 degrees. You know, so don't let the colors deceive you that you see all that blue and purple and you think, oh, it must be nice and cool up there, maybe in the mid to low 70s. Nope, still 80 degrees or warmer all the way up through here and mid 80s as you go farther south. So yes, we do have to watch all of this. Then, of course, the warmest area tucked in the southwest Gulf in the Bay of Campeche. Um, and, you know, it's only October 1st. We're not done yet. You know, just got to temper it with not worrying people because we've been through a lot, but also not ignoring the pattern and so forth. And that's why we're here. That's why we're doing this. And again, I mentioned this yesterday as well. Water temps off the southeast coast. Uh, I'm actually kind of excited about this, that 26 Celsius. I hadn't gone to the beach much this year at all. Between traveling and doing some hail work in the early part of the summer, family vacation where we went to Alaska, 
kind of cold up there. And then the hurricane started up. I haven't had a lot of beach time. And with the water that yellow there, that is 26 Celsius. That's 80 degrees. Yeah, 79 and a half, 80, whatever. I'll take it. Uh, if this will last just a couple more days, get to the weekend, go down to the beach with a couple of the kids and just have some fun out there. But even to here, if, if, if we were to get something that ran up the coast, I'm just speculating, just saying, you know, the next couple of weeks, the water temperatures could support something rather strong. But I want to make sure you understand there is nothing of the kind coming, so don't even worry about it. But yes, the waters are still warm. Yes, it's still hurricane season. And yes, we still have 60 days left on this guy, the calendar. It's a little flip calendar, a little dramatic effect for you. A man-made calendar, right? We'll see what Mother Nature decides. We might go on into November and beyond you know, with, with lots of activity, especially in the Caribbean. But we can deal with it as it comes for now few areas to watch. We'll watch that system in the Western Caribbean and eventually the Gulf of Mexico and hopefully things will just temper down enough and keep it all east of us and we can continue to pick up after devastating Hurricane Helene. As always, thank you for tuning in. I do appreciate your time and attention from all of us at the Hurricane Track family. We do appreciate it very, very much. A big welcome to all the new YouTube subscribers. That's great. Love to see our community growing. And with that said, I'm Mark Suddeth. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.